To find out how psychological stress can affect the heart, we went to New York to see Dr. Paul Roche. Dr. Roche is president of the American Institute of Stress, clinical professor of medicine and psychiatry at New York Medical College, and honorary vice president of the International Stress Management Association. We began by asking Dr. Roche if he could define what stress actually is. Well, no. Uh, simply because nobody's been able to do that. Uh, the term was coined by Hans Selye around 1936, who defined it as a nonspecific response of the body to any demand for change. Really wasn't very helpful. He redefined it as the rate of wear and tear on the body. Well, that's a pretty good definition of aging, which stress certainly contributes to. He used to answer the question this way later on. Everybody knows what stress is, but nobody really knows. So stress itself is difficult to define. But how might psychological stress from a lack of social support translate into an increased risk of heart disease? You think about all the advances made in diagnostics with MRIs, uh, squid, PET scanning, positive emission tomography. These are all advances that have nothing to do with cholesterol or something in the blood. These are all advances that are based on energy medicine. And that is the medicine of the future, and certainly the future for stress research, in my opinion. Medicine is uh, entering a new paradigm. Good health depends upon good communication, good communication between the constituency of an organism and with the external environment. The question is, how does communication take place in the body? Well, we know there are hardwired connections with the central nervous system, and we know that the their endocrine system sends out little uh, chemical messengers from the brain and hormones and so forth and so on. But we visualize communication in the body at a chemical molecular level. We visualize that these little things that circulate around find receptor sites on cell membranes that they communicate like keys into a lock. But ultimately, that signal is transmitted by a weak electrical impulse to the interior of the cell. And ultimately, all communication in the body takes place at a physical atomic level rather than a chemical molecular one. And you know, we understand now, for example, that the EEG waves, brain waves, are not merely the noise of the machinery of the brain, but they are signals being sent to receptor sites on cell walls for these subtle energies. And we know, for example, that the electromagnetic field around the heart is 5,000 times greater than the brain, and it extends out like 12 feet. And we can now show that that changes with your emotions, as certain specific characteristics when you feel appreciative or warmth or sensitive, and a very jagged thing if you're angry, etc. And you can see that reflected in the EEG of somebody if you touch them. Those factors have a very powerful influence on the heart. And again, it supports the role of emotions in heart disease, etc. And we're now able to measure that where we couldn't before. It also appears that there are several other mechanisms to explain how stress in general could affect heart disease risk. Stress can also produce myocardial necrosis, a heart attack, in patients who have no coronary atherosclerosis. Now the conventional idea everybody was taught when we went to medical school. You had a clot in the vessel and no blood could get through and the myocardium died. But it doesn't work that way. You can have vessels completely occluded with atherosclerosis and there's enough collateral circulation so that even at autopsy the vessel is 
is closed, the patient has never had any symptoms or electrocardiographic changes because of uh, collateral circulation. The converse is also true. You can have a myocardial infarction and sudden death due to acute stress in young, healthy patients with no atherosclerosis. You can talk to anybody with a heart condition or angina who will tell you that when they're upset, they have chest pain, etc. And John Hunter, 19th century English physician who elevated surgery to a specialty from a mechanical trade, suffered from angina. And being a keen observer, he said, my life is in the hands of any rascal who chooses to annoy me, which turned out to be a very accurate prediction because he died two weeks later during an argument with a colleague.